there are uh, number of uh, uh, definitions that we have to throw in now yesterday we talked of uh, graph which comes with uh, various uh, ingredients that uh, make a graph uh, there are vertices there are edges loops multiple edges and then we drew some graphs actually some examples of cycles and so on let's define the degree of a vertex is the number of edges incident and is generally denoted by idea being loops loops contribute to what is the degree of uh, this vertex i'll actually have to count this 1 2 3 four and five because loop is supposed to contribute two to degree that is the idea that uh, loop contributes two loop, loop is to be counted as two edges at that vertex so it actually is only one edge it is to be counted as two edges so degree of this vertex so there are as many as five vertices here degree of v1 is 5 v3 v4 also one and Yes. Uh, what do we take as degree of V five? Four. All right. If there is a further vertex here, okay. because the the way in which this is defined every edge contributes two to the degree if it joins uh, two different vertices that is it is not a loop then it contributes one to the degree of v and contributes one to the degree of w if it is a loop like uh, the loop at v1 by definition it contributes 2 to the degree of of v what that means is if i add up all the degrees of all the vertices then it's as good as saying that i'm adding up uh, all the edges but each edge is getting counted twice each each edge will get get counted twice 
So the sum of all the degrees is equal to 2 times number of edges. And the right hand side is an even number. Therefore, the left hand side must also be an even number. It has to be an even number. So, sum of all the degrees has to be an even number. So, this is a basic requirement uh, for us to be able to construct a graph. If the degrees do not add to it, so if I randomly pick up numbers <laughs> and say that construct a graph with uh, degree of v1 so and so degree of v if these numbers do not really add to an even number then there cannot be such a graph that is clear. So, if the sum is uh, an odd number you really cannot construct a, a graph uh, with that list sum of all the degrees uh, in a graph is even let us make one more definition. respectively odd. If d of p is even respectively odd. So, which of these vertices are even vertices and which are odd vertices here? V1 is odd, V2 is also odd, V3, V4 are odd, V5 and V6 are even vertices. Okay. Those that have even degree are even vertices, those that have odd degree are odd vertices. V1, V2, V3, V4 are all odd vertices, whereas V5 and V6 are even vertices. For any even vertex, its contribution to the left hand side, the degree sum, is an even number. The fact that it is an even vertex means its degree is even, its degree is an even number. For any odd vertex, the contribution to this sum is an odd number, but the total is an even number. Therefore, what I get for free out of this is that the number of odd vertices in any graph has to be an even number. Okay. If I want to get an even sum, then I have to have even number of odd numbers. I have to have even number of odd numbers to get an even sum. Even numbers of course contribute even, even vertices contribute even to this. Odd vertices contribute odd to this, therefore their number must be an even number. Okay. A walk
where of uh, alternate vertex edge and such that bi is incident vi is incident with uh, not vi ei yeah. ei is incident with vi minus 1 and ei Okay, let's give these names. So let's call this E1, call this E2, call this E3, then E4, E5, E6, E7. Let's begin at the vertex V1. From V1 using E3 you go to E2, V2 then through E4 you come back to V1, then using E1 you again come back to V1, then using E2 you go to V5, then over E8 you come back to V5, then over E7 you get to V2. Again using E6 come back to V2 etc. This is a walk. This is a walk. This is a walk from V1 to V2. Okay. Yeah, you could, uh, one could describe this. What, what is happening is first went this way, then came back, then I went over that, then I went that way. Then I use this loop, then I came back to V5, then I went to E7, to V2, then to E6, uh, then V2, E6, to V4, then I came back to, it's okay, alright. There is no requirement whatsoever that uh, <laughs> you don't repeat edges or anything of that kind. A walk is too general a term, is that clear? Walk is very, very general term. It's just that I cannot obviously write V1, E7 or something like that. That's not okay because V1 is not an end vertex of E7. Is that clear? So I cannot do that. As long as I don't do that, the definition of walk is very clear. It's exactly like a walk one may, one may take. So this is a fairly intuitive definition. Such a walk joins V0 to Vk and it's called a V0 Vk walk. Number of edges in this walk is called length of W. So that walk has length k. This walk I will actually have to count. This is an edge, this is an edge, this is an edge, this is 4, 5, 6. 7, 8, there as many as 8 edges here, therefore <laughs> length of that walk is 8. Even if your graph is very small, you could really have walk of uh, 
arbitrarily walk that is arbitrarily long because I could just take a loop and keep going over that loop is that clear it's perfectly all right I can go over that loop 100 times if I want to and that does define a walk <coughs> a trail is a walk that does not repeat an edge. So that is not quite a trail because I did repeat that edge E6 that edge E6 was repeated. So that is only a walk, it is not a trail. What would constitute a trail? So this is a walk. that is a trail. In the definition of trail, you may come back to a vertex, that is all right. You are not allowed to use the same edge again, is that is that clear? I am not allowed to use the same edge over again. So in particular, even if the graph is finite, the number of walks could be infinite. It, it would be in general because if I just have a single loop, I can go over that loop any number of times. Whereas, number of trails will not be because I am not allowed to use edges. I can use an edge only once, if at all. Therefore, number of trails would be finite. All our graphs are finite, therefore number of trails will be only a finite number. A V0 VK trail is called an is called a closed trail. If VK is equal to V0. start at a vertex come back to the same vertex. that does not repeat vertex except the end ones. It is called a cycle. A trail any vertex is a path So for a cycle, all the vertices are distinct except the so 
that is V1, that is V2, that is V3, V4, V5, V6, V7 and V8 equal to V0. What is the length of this cycle? Eight. Length of this cycle is eight. A cycle is denoted by C K. So this is a C eight. What is a C one? How about cycle of length one? Sorry, it it must be a loop. It has to be a loop. So not all graphs will have cycles of length one. Only those graphs that have loops <laughs> will have cycles of length one. Others uh, can. If your graph, uh, in particular, if your graph is simple, then there is no cycle of length 1. What about cycle of length 2? Multiple edge. It has to be a multiple edge because vertex is not to repeat. Okay. So, for a cycle of length 2, I have to have a multiple edge, I have to have a double edge. You cannot combine two loops because that repeats a vertex. <laughs> Don't think that you can, this is not okay. It is a trail, but uh, it is not quite a cycle because it repeats that vertex. From that vertex, you come back to that vertex and again, so the, that that is not allowed. Intermediate vertices are not to be repeated, only the end vertices are allowed to be repeated. So for one to have a C2, you must have a multiple edge. Therefore, in particular, if your graph is simple, there are no cycles of length 1 or 2. Cycles, the lengths of cycles begin from 3 onwards. Length has to be at least 3 or more. What about a path? One, two, three, four. So this is called a P4. So in general, PK path of length K. Is that clear? Lemma? U to V walk. This appears obvious. This appears quite clear. So one should be able to <laughs> lots of intuitive statements. One should be able to provide proof. How would I go about uh, handling this? If W does not repeat uh, a vertex at all, then uh, then it is a path. Okay, then the W itself becomes a path. If no vertex is repeated, 
then it becomes a path. Why is it not a path? Because there are vertices that got repeated in W. How would, uh, how would I say this? You began, but at some vertex you sort of went around. Can these things be removed actually? Can we remove this? Yes, that is clear. I can, I can actually remove this because if I remove this, I will get a smaller walk from U to V. There may be many such things. One by one I can remove all of them and then finally straighten the thing so as to get a path. Question is, it is a purely pedagogical question, how do I write this? Okay. Yeah. Hmm. He is asking, can you please take the mic here? Yeah. Yeah. We first write the walk and V1, V0, V1, V1. Hmm. Then first we start with U. Yeah. Then find the rightmost incidence of U in that walk. Yeah. Let it be, say, VK. Hmm then VK will be followed by EK, and then VK plus 1, hmm. then find the rightmost incidence of VK plus 1 and keep on going like that. So then you will be able to cut out all the loops and you will eventually get a path. Not loops, these are not really loops, these are, not loops, uh, these are basically closed walks, yeah. they are closed what walks. should be called closed walk that starts at that vertex and comes back to the same vertex. Hmm. Okay. So that closed walk all such kinds of closed walks need to be removed. Hmm. Okay, let us attempt a proof of this. Since V is not U, L of W is at least 1. It's clear because I have to go from U to V. <laughs> so the walk must have length at least one. You see, it's possible that around U there may be lots of loops. You go around those and then etc. <coughs> if what happens if L of W is equal to one? Then that just means that U to V is an edge. And that single edge actually is a path. Single edge is a path. I can now say that I can make an induction on the length of W. The proof uh, now needs to be completed by making induction on the length of W. Again, if W repeats no vertex at all, then it is a path, nothing to be done in that case.
otherwise Starts and ends at W. Remove. all the edges to get. So, this is a basic idea is I am now going to divide this W into three parts. Okay. W consists of the first portion from u to w followed by s and followed by w2 that's exactly the description of w u to v walk with length of w prime clearly strictly smaller than w clearly because you remove you're removing a portion okay you're removing a positive portion namely s therefore by induction we are through So, as a general comment, one way of uh, <laughs> saying this is do this by induction. Uh, other way on the operative level, what is it that we are doing? Operative level, every time we have a closed walk at an intermediate vertex, just keep removing all closed walks. This procedure I may have to repeat 100 times. It is possible that I actually have to repeat this 100 times if I, if I have to obtain a U to V path. I mean, what I am trying to point out to you is the difference uh, this is sort of a pure mathematical proof is that clear this proof is complete <laughs> because it's, uh, proof is over by induction because now we have a sh shorter walk for shorter walk uh, by induction the assertion is true therefore it is also true for that longer walk alternatively if I have to find such a path actually I keep removing such kinds of humps wherever they occur finally I will succeed in straightening up the whole thing and would have obtained a path is this clear uh, it is the second part that does matter in graph theory quite many times because you have to say how you will do it okay not that there is a great deal of difference between the two here but uh, at times there are situations where at operative level the things are uh, things are considerably more tedious than when you write it out in this manner proved by induction ok is this clear so every u to v walk uh, contains u to v path yeah I mean only thing I have to write here is by induction w prime has a u to v path which implies that w also has a u to v path
g is connected if there is a path from u to v. <coughs> Essentially most of the graphs that we have uh, seen so far they are connected. What happens if the graph is not connected so let us uh, UV path and a VW path. Then there is a U to W path. How do I say this? Unfortunately, you cannot really join this path with that path <laughs> to get u to w path. That is not true. What you can get out of this is a u to w walk because the picture is not as nice as I was trying to. <laughs> okay, it may even repeat some of these edges. It will not, it can repeat some of the edges eventually reaching w. But if I have walk from u to w as we just proved then there is also walk from u to v u to w. Okay? If I have walk from u if I have a path from u to v and a path from v to w I can paste them together concatenate them so that I get a walk from u to w. That walk from u to w has uh, in it a path from u to w and therefore that lemma is proved. Okay? We can therefore define an equivalence relation, we can define a relation u is related to v if either u is equal to v or u not v and there exists a uv path. Then this is reflexive by definition, it is symmetric. If you have a path from u to v, then there is clearly a path from v to u, what uh, generally should be called reverse of that path. Okay? You follow the path backwards. And if you have a path from u to v and a path from v to w, then there is a walk from u to w using which I can get a path from u to w. Therefore, this relationship is also transitive. Therefore, this is an equivalence relation. The equivalence classes under this are called components. So, any two components are either the same or they have no vertex in common, they have absolutely no vertex in 
nothing in common at all. How many components are there? Five components. Okay. The component trivial. component without edges is to be called a trivial component. So, there is trivial component here. This is trivial, that is trivial. That is not trivial because there is an edge there. Okay. A vertex V is called an isolated vertex. So, that is isolated, that is isolated, that is isolated. The remaining are not isolated. <coughs> Eventually, we will switch to simple graphs. For simple graphs, this kind of picture will not occur, okay? because there will be no loops. One of the ways of uh, looking at a simple graph, which I told you yesterday, was to view it as if it is a subgraph, which it is, of the complete graph uh, on n vertices, subgraph of kn. How do, we, how do I obtain uh, g as a sub, if g has n vertices, then I draw the complete graph on n vertices, whichever edges are not in g, I just delete them. I just keep removing those edges, finally I will get the graph G. This is really cutting from above. You could also build things from below. <laughs> you keep adding edges till you get G. Okay? So, you could build things from below as well. For example, if I have, a, so let us talk of a simple graph, n vertices. Suppose there is only one edge, how many components uh, is it guaranteed to have? Uh, yes, please. Huh? Yes. Yeah. No, component is trivial. No, that is okay. So, that, that component is trivial. This component I will not call trivial. Okay. It is an, this is not trivial, but this is an isolated vertex. Eventually, this, as I said, these uh, problems will evaporate because we will be handling only simple graphs. Okay. When we handle simple graphs, there will be no difference between this and that. Okay. Is that clear? Suppose I have 10 vertices and only one edge. 
can the graph be connected okay incidentally a connected graph has how many components one there is only one component in fact graph is connected if and only if it has a single component it has only one component connected graphs have one component and those are the only connected graphs graphs that have only one component are connected graphs <coughs> if i have 10 vertices and only one edge can it can the graph be connected no clearly not i mean that one edge cannot really join <laughs> for to so uh, how many components am i guaranteed nine that's correct at least nine components is that clear that one edge that i have can take two vertices not more than two that also depends if that one edge happens to be a loop then i'll really have 10 components not nine but actually 10 components okay so let's write a theorem If you have one one edge, then then you have at least n minus one components. How would I? Uh, this can be proved by induction. You can actually. <laughs> it won't be difficult to prove this by induction i'm just trying to give an alternate idea what what could be done if you don't want to use induction proof build n vertices no edges it's as if in space i have n points in space no adjacencies of any kind how many components did would i have then n components graph on n vertices uh, without any edge at all has obviously n components adding one edge to this reduces the number of components by at most one no more than one it may not actually reduce number of components because if you do it in a bad manner if you draw a loop around the vertex then the number of components remains same so every time i add an edge number of components reduces by at most one it may remain the same or can decrease by one but cannot decrease by 2 it can, sorry if you draw a loop it is an edge I mean I am not saying that it is simple graph I am not saying that the graph is simple ok can reduce the number of components by at most one this idea would be required later so <laughs> for example if i add this edge then this portion was already connected i am not really reducing the number of components by doing this i am not going to reduce the number of components 
for example if that is already drawn if I want to reduce the number of components I must add an edge in such a way that it joins two different components is that clear adding something like an edge here is useless okay it does not decrease the number of components I must add an edge from here to here or something like that okay hence by adding Okay, just the number of components is reduced by at most k. At least So connected graph on n vertices, so if your graph has n vertices and is connected, it has to have a minimum number of edges. It must have a certain minimum number of edges because I want this number to become equal to 1. What is a connected graph? Connected graph has only one component. When would n minus k be equal to 1? That is when k is equal to n minus 1. So for a connected graph, connected graph has to have at least n minus 1 edges. Connected graph on n vertices has to have at least n minus 1 edges. That does not mean it will become connected just because you draw n minus 1 edges. They have to be drawn in such a way that you connect things exactly as, as I showed to you. If I draw further edge here, that is no, no good at all. Okay? All right. induce subgraph yeah really speaking I should be writing here say theoretic uh, <laughs> difficulties such kinds of abuses of notations are allowed okay where the things are clear by context I, mean, I should strictly be writing it that way if I start learning set theory I have to write it as set how can you subtract an element from a set you can only remove a subset from a set for example if I remove this vertex then what will remain only from this portion I am ignoring the remaining part then what will remain will be just three vertices that vertex is removed as soon as the vertex is removed the edges at that vertex they stand removed they have to go away okay Therefore, there is an edge that way, there is a loop there and there is a third vertex here. So by removing that vertex, the resulting graph is disconnected. It is actually disconnected. Whereas, if I remove that vertex, the resulting graph is still connected. Is that clear? <laughs> it does remain connected 
that vertex I can go from this these are adjacent and I can go from this vertex to that vertex through that edge. So, removing that vertex will not disconnect that graph. How about removing that vertex that will also not disconnect that graph. How about removing that vertex it will not disconnect the, the graph. So, that is the idea of a cut vertex. A cut vertex is one whose removal will actually disconnect the graph, whose removal must disconnect the graph. A cut vertex has more components. For example, this is a cut vertex. This is a cut vertex as we just saw. This is a cut vertex in that graph. That vertex is not a cut vertex. That vertex also is not a cut vertex. That vertex of course is not a cut vertex. Okay, more examples. What is this? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, that is a part. Which of these are cut vertices? This is cut vertex, this is cut vertex, this is cut vertex. The end vertices are not cut vertices. Okay. What are cut vertices? Sorry? there are no cut vertices. I mean, graph does not have to have cut vertices. Okay. <laughs> it is not essential that every graph has, has cut vertices. This, there are no cut vertices. Okay. Cycles have no cut vertices. Uh, particularly if you talk of simple graph, cycles uh, have no cut vertices. How about the complete graph? Complete graph on n vertices, there are no cut vertices. You remove that. In fact, so this is sort of higher classification of connectivity, which we'll indulge in uh, considerably later. So, uh, not only complete graphs are connected, but they are highly connected. They are too highly connected. Whereas a graph like the path, actually, if you just remove that vertex, it gets broken into two parts. Okay. Uh, there is a fundamental difference when we do graph theory between the idea of removing a vertex and removing an edge. Removing an edge is very different from removing a vertex. When you remove an edge, you do not remove the end vertices of that edge. Is that clear? Therefore, the vertices will remain where they are. They are not going to, that is not going to be affected. Only that edge will be removed. Yeah, for example, I could remove this edge here. Then uh, this vertex will remain and that vertex will also remain. Does the removal of uh, that edge disconnect that graph? It does. It does because it uh, splits it into the left portion and the right portion. How about this? Or for that matter, removal of any edge in this, does it disconnect the, that uh, graph? It does. How about the same question here? For a cycle, if you remove an edge, does it disconnect the graph? No. Okay. This situation is what is called a cut edge. More components.
אוקיי. Is this graph connected? This is in fact a simple graph. Is it connected? Yes. <coughs> What are the cut edges here? How many cut edges does it have? Four. Which four? Two. This and this. Those are the cut edges. Only two cut edges. One more. This is only two cut edges. That edge and that edge. Those are the cut edges. No other edge is a cut edge. You are not convinced? Maybe you can come to the board and just show to the class. Yeah, take the mic with you. so clear difficulties if others have the same difficulty if you cancel this edge not two you're not a, yeah that huh. no you are allowed to remove <laughs> you are supposed to remove only that edge is that clear you are not going to remove number of edges okay Is that clear? Okay. Yeah. Sit down. Thank you. So just removing that edge will not disconnect that graph. Of course, it will not. Removing that edge or that edge will disconnect that that graph. It will, in fact, divide that graph into two parts, two components. If I remove this edge, there is uh, one component that contains the major portion of that graph, and one component that that will have isolated vertex if i remove that edge then there will be one component the lower component that has four vertices and the upper component which has 5 plus 2 seven vertices okay is that clear both of these are cut edges the remaining edges are not cut edges does it have cut vertices does this graph have cut vertices how about this is that a cut vertex no this is not a cut vertex how about this or that these are not cut vertices so where are the cut vertices if if any this is a cut vertex 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 this is also a cut vertex so there are four cut vertices okay so there are cut edges <laughs> as well as cut vertices Why is it that this is not a cut edge, whereas that is a cut edge? There's something uh, different between this edge and that edge. What is different? That edge is actually part of a cycle. That edge happens to be part of a cycle, whereas that edge is part of no cycle at all. Same thing is true with this edge. Therefore, it would be very reasonable to guess that <laughs> an edge is a cut edge. if it is not in any cycle so that in fact uh, would form a theorem so i'll write that theorem we'll break for a while and then we'll prove it uh, after the break So you talk of uh, those edges which are in some cycle; they are to be called cyclic edges. So most of the edges here are cyclic edges. 
this age is a cyclic age, that age is a cyclic age, as opposed to non-cyclic ages. Some ages are cyclic and non-cyclic, so some ages remaining are non-cyclic. What this theorem is saying is, it's exactly the non-cyclic ages which are cut ages. So in particular, if your graph has no cycle at all, like here, then every edge is a cut edge, which is true. For a path, every edge is a cut edge. That's exactly what that is saying. Whereas for a cycle, obviously every edge is on cycle and therefore there are no cut edges. Okay. Okay, we'll break for a few minutes and we'll come back. Thank you.